I'm also revealed in the new. Sisters and brothers, the teachings of Jesus Christ are the teachings that predominantly run the church. Sisters and brothers, if there is anything else outside of that, then it becomes a dogma. Dogma is not doctrine. Dogma is something I think that would work well here. But you cannot teach dogma as doctrine. Doctrine is the foundations or the principles on which the church of the Lord Jesus Christ stands. You cannot take out one block of foundation in the doctrine. You can lose the dogma and live, but you cannot mess with the foundation. If you mess with the foundation, you don't have no church. You got something, but you ain't got church. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory. Sisters and brothers, there is the mighty church of God triumphant. So here, these Christian fathers orchestrated under the anointing and the auspices of the Holy Spirit. It is their job to set foundation. And the foundation has already been given unto them by their mentor, Jesus Christ. There are two ordinances that must take place in the Christian church. And one of those ordinances is the Lord's Supper. And the other is baptism. Jesus said these two ordinances will separate my church from any other church. That is communion, or we call it the Eucharist, or we call it the Lord's table, or we call it holy communion, or we call it bread and food washing service. I don't care what you call it, it is the ordinance of the church. What is an ordinance? An ordinance is a law that Jesus has put in that cannot be rescinded. It cannot be vetoed out. It cannot be amended. It cannot be extracted. If there is no Eucharist or no table of the Lord or no foot washing and bread, no communion, it's not Christian. And if there be no baptism, then it is not Christian. It is something, but it ain't Christian. It looks like it's Christian, but it ain't Christian. It's trying to act and huck a buck like Christianity, but it ain't Christian, honey. It's just a little some some hanging around. Here, yeah, I didn't say just any kind of baptism. The baptism is to be baptismos, or it means to be submerged. That word baptismos means to be submerged. Sisters and brothers, here now. The Bible means submerged. It means to be under where we get our word submarine. It means to be totally submerged under water. Sisters and brothers, then we cannot sprinkle and we cannot dust you with water. It must be submerged. We must be baptized in water and in the spirit. Sisters and brothers, baptism is Christianity. It is the Christ-like symbolisms of the church. In spirit baptism, it is also the word rohosh, which is Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep. And then God said, let there be. And it 
yourself, uh, sisters and brothers, in the Old Covenant and in the New Testament, uh, it is numa or dunamis. Uh, it means Supernatural power. Here, yeah, now listen. If this rush of this dunamis, of this numa, of this breath of God being breathed into you, there is to be transformation. If there is no transformation, you have not been baptized. Not baptized. There has to be transformation. I shout hallelujah anyhow. Sit, 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 sit. Sisters and brothers here, we are collecting bodies. We're doing a lot of collecting of bodies. But we are not collecting Christians. We're just collecting a lot of stuff. And that's why this Bible has to be taught. It has to be preached. It has to be declared. It has to be prophesied. It has to be shared. It is the good news. Look at somebody and tell them I'm free, honey. When it comes to the doctrines of baptisms and in Romans chapter 6 it says Christians what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound ah, look at our apostolic fathers do we keep on sinning and call ourselves Christians he said God forbid Dead, it said dead brother. Help me say dead preacher. Help me say dead sister. How then shall we that are dead to sin live in it longer therein? Reach over and tell somebody, watch it now. We are dead to sin. Come on, tell them dead, 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 stinking dead. philosophies such as eternal security. We would like to embrace doctrines that God has not embraced. We want to embrace them and bring them and stick them as a part of the foundation of the church. Oh no, 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 no. He said dead to sin. How shall we that are dead to sin live in it longer therein now is that in your bible is that is that is that there look at it for yourself sister look there brother look look there verse 3 says what know ye not that so many of us as were Baptized baptizos into submerged into submerged covered up into Jesus Christ were baptizos covered up into his death. Read it, read it, read it. Verse 4 says, Therefore, now you can't get to therefore unless you understand verse 1, 2, and 3. If verse 1, 2, and 3 is still confusing, then that word in chapter, in verse 4, starts out therefore. That is a conclusive statement, meaning once you have arrived to the thinking of 1, 2, and 3, let's go to the conclusion of the matter. It says therefore. We, me and you, are buried, what, with him, by, we are buried with him by baptism, into, we are into him, we are baptized into Jesus Christ's death, that like as Christ, the Christos, the anointed one, was raised up from the dead by the glory or the power of the Father.
Father. Even so, you and me also should walk in the newness of life. Mm. Sisters and brothers, uh, baptism means you die. Mm. Baptism is not a showboat place uh, where you just invite family members to see you in a white robe uh, and a swimming cap. Uh, sisters and brothers going down into H2O. No ma'am, no sir. Uh, baptism is going down into Jesus Christ. Uh, you go down into his grave uh, and you rise in power. Somebody say power. Say power. Look at somebody and say, let's get on the mark. But now watch here. He said, for if we be planted together in the likeness of Jesus' death, we shall be also in the likeness of of his resurrection, does your Bible say resurrection? Uh, when Jesus got up in the resurrection, uh, did he just get up weak? Uh, uh, did he get up quiet? Uh, did he get up shame? Uh, did he get up cussing and drunk? Uh, did he get up going down the street to see he could do who he is? Uh, the Bible said he rose with all power in his hands. Come on here. Yeah. Well, when we rise up out of that watery grave, we don't come out of that water weak. We don't come out of there cussing, stealing, lying, cheating, and whoremongering. We come out of there with power. All power is given unto you. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory. Reach over and touch somebody and say, come on, come on, honey. Sisters and brothers, he said in verse 7, read it, scholar, read it, read it, scholar, read it. Verse 7, and it says what? For he that is dead is free. That doesn't say free from sin. It says free. That means before you got into the water, when you made up in your mind that yes, God, this is what I want. I want this. I want a change. I, I want a renewal. He said, you are already freed from sin. I asked you a question then. What is the problem with our sinning so much? we are freed from sin, if we are buried, if we are dead, I just made a friend here. I have a round trip ticket and I want to thank him for it. And you're trying to convince me that being buried in Christ, we still come up homongous. You trying to convince me that when we come up, we still homosexuals and still lesbians. No, no, no. No. away the foundation that the Christian church is built upon, we don't have a Christian church. The Christian church is built upon two ordinances. If you take that away, you don't have a Christian church. You have something. And you just calling it church. But take off the Christian. Because Christian means Christ like. Yes. 
sisters and brothers. It says here we are freed. Now if we be dead, it says dead. And to be dead is to be no more life. It means to expiate. It means to expire. It means to cease to be dead. We are dead to sin. We're dead. It's just gone. It's we're dead. The appetite, the thought, the mind. We are dead. We are buried. Sisters and brothers. It says, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Because what he died once, he said it was sufficient. So what you're trying to tell me is we have a weak Christ. And what he said in order is not strong enough to work. He cannot keep us from lying. He needs to die again because this stuff ain't working. I, I, I still chasing deacon so and so. We have in the Christian church, we have secret whores. kinds of big meetings and conferences and conventions. Instead of one hotel room, we have extra rooms. We stay with our wives at night, but we stay with her in the day. The Christian church is not a whoremongering church. The Christian church is not a lying church. We do business one way verbally, but when it comes down to really doing business, we change things around. We shuffle business under the table. We preachers a day like we buy prostitutes. We buy them. They're bought, paid, and sold for. They can't tell you the truth because they need your money to buy bread. Sisters and brothers, this is not the church or something, but it's not the church. This church is written out here and it's plain, it's not confused, it is not dwarfed, it is not a mean sibling. Never seen so much meanness and abuse. We come to church and collect wounds like we're collecting postcards. We are wounded people. Battered and our abuses have come from the hands of our own spiritual sisters and brothers. That's not the church. The church of the living God said, 
They shall know you by the fruit that ye bear. You should love one another. Sisters and brothers, sisters and brothers, I, the Lord said for us, get on the mark and run. It is necessary that we understand the truth of God's word. It is baptism. It is holy communion. We must commune one with the other. We do all we can to run each other down. That's not communion. We do all we can to separate and divide. Isn't this a wonderful aggregation tonight? Have you noticed that we are Baptists and Pentecostals? That we are black and white? That we are from different denominations? And tonight it doesn't matter. You know why? Because we honor one Lord. One Father that is above all. And that's in us all. The devil separates us. Because a house divided against itself. It cannot stand. Luke chapter 5 declares that it's difficult to put a new piece on an old garment. Yeah. And it's hard to put new wine in old wines. Mm. We'll run away to a meeting like this so that we can find soulless and spiritual comfort. And we'll get back to our several churches of worship and wipe our mouths like we've not eaten anything and go back to the old life Change. Come on, sit with me here. There's got to be a change. We have got to change the way we walk. Why? Because this book has been written for our admonition and our learning. The Bible speaks expressly concerning the times in which we live in. Tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 3 that there would come the age of the Laodicean church. The church that would say in and of itself that it was good and increased and in need of nothing. Sisters and brothers here, God answers their state of stability and vain security by saying that you say that you are rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. He said, I counsel you. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest cover or clothe yourself from shame and nakedness cause you do appear naked. Anoint thine eyes with eyes say that thou mayest see as many as I love I rebuke. Uh, now that's hard today uh, because many times our old fathers in the gospel uh, under the old covenant to walk under the anointing of a prophet uh, you have to be willing to die uh, because it is not a popular office uh, sisters and brothers hear me today uh, God said let us get on the mark yeah. Let us run and run like we don't even believe we've got another hour or another day. Mm. We have let a lot of time in our life go laxing. Uh, we have become lethargic and slothful in our spirits. Uh, five in the gospel according to St. Luke, verse number 36. Uh, God spoke to the disciples uh, and said unto them at this time, uh, he said unto them, he said, here, brethren, uh, I want to share with you a parabolic scheme, uh, nothing more than a heavenly 
revelation uh, uh, shared in a very humanistic, natural way uh, so that humanity can embrace it. Uh, in this fifth chapter in the gospel, uh, he shares with them as they sit. Uh, he said, sometimes you've got to recognize uh, that it's difficult to put a new piece on an old garment. Uh, brethren, as you walk through here, uh, it's tough to pour new wine into old wine skin. Uh, watch here. Uh, you've been wondering about that here and there, uh, and you've heard it taught as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but let me give you revelation. Uh, God shared with me about this passage. Uh, he said, I own it. It is also revelation knowledge. Uh, it is difficult to put revelation onto an old garment. Uh, revelation is an uncovering uh, of things that have been hidden for a long time. Uh, it's tough to pour new wine into old bottles. Uh, what he says here is that the bottle uh, will not accept it. The bottle will break. Right. Uh, oftentimes, pastors have so often tried to put new vision. Mm. When God said a thing into old bottles, the Bible said they would say once they tasted the new revelation, I like the taste of the old wine better. I, I'm not comfortable with this new way. I'm not comfortable with this new word. I'm not comfortable with this new direction. It breaks the bottle and the revelation is spilled out on the ground and the bottle is destroyed. Watch the word of God before God can transfer revelation. He needs to find a new bottle. He's got to find new bottles for a new move, a new dimension, and a new revelation. The Bible says because that old garment will look conspicuous with that new patch on it. Sometimes you try to pray revelation in the people. Pray that they can catch a hold to it. Pray they can see God trying to take them to another dimension. You try to paint the picture for them, but they can't seem to grasp it. That's the reason he told his disciples, no, no, you can't force this thing. He said, no, new bottle sisters and brothers you can't whip them up make them up you can't force it down their gullet he said new wine must have new bottles shout hallelujah you got to realize they'll keep saying oh this but no 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 we when we used to do it we we, we we didn't do it like that. I don't understand. We come up with this newfangled something and new this. I don't understand all of this. Sisters and brothers, you can't understand it because you're trying to make it fit into your old patterns. And the Bible said the vision spills out. The vision, which is so costly, spills out onto the ground. And the vision is lost with the bottle because the old bottle cannot contain new vision. The new vision destroys and explodes and bursts the bottle because the bottle is not equipped to hold the new vision. Reach over and tell somebody, you gotta change your bottle. You gotta be a new bottle. You gotta be one that can handle new vision, new anointing, and new dimension. Shout hallelujah, shout glory. Sisters 
and brothers, if we are to get on the mark, I know this might sound new to some of you. That's the reason why I share that with you. For First Peter's epistle too, the church says unto them, men think you strange cause you won't travel with them because you are not accustomed to these strange things. You got to understand they uh, like the old way better. Uh, for that reason, sisters and brothers, uh, we have gone into some kind of zombie state. Uh, we then went back and got old bodies and uh, dug up our old flesh and uh, put that old dead body around our neck uh, because we want to make the old with the new. Uh, but it only destroys the body. Sisters and brothers, he said, wherein they think you strange, that you won't run with them and company with them. You won't go out to eat with them or hang with them. Why? Because they're filled with revelings. They're filled with lawless lust. They are wanting in their lust. Revelings and all night banqueting can never go home no matter what hour night it is. Moving from one abomination to the other. Worshipping all kinds of an adulterous lifestyle. Sisters and brothers, God sent me to tell you get back on this is the year of release. This is your jubilee. Go back and bury those dead works again. Put your old dead body back in the grave and walk in the newness of life. You are a brand new creature with a brand new lifestyle. Wait a minute, ma'am. Yes, sir. that we live in a time where men are walking in unceasable lust right in the body of Christ they want to say and let their flesh rule but this Bible said step away from them have no company with them don't sit down and eat with them don't give them a house a pat on the back when you know good and well they got a wife and they sleeping with Sally he said keep no company with them this Bible said for this cause for this cause often saints we are made mockery of the world cause we keep these kind of lifestyles Parade them before us. You tell your sisters and brothers, Christ died so we can live holy. Christ died when we got the victory. We got the power to say no. We got the power to walk right. We got the power to live right. This Bible said, He has given us power. for us as the church today as we stand together to walk in this unconsciousness we are walking together and we know we know our brothers and sisters are taken over taken over by different thoughts he said you that are spiritual you that are strong then come on, let's bear the infirmity. Let's strengthen them that are weak. Let's tell them, brother, sister, God died. 
Jesus died and gave us strength so that you don't have to live this way. We are dead to sin. He said we don't have to live any longer therein. The Bible shares with us as we look at the word of God. It shares with us how that God said in his word, he said so. So you run, let us run this race with patience. The race that is set before us. This Bible shares with us that we're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Listen here, sister. We got a good author. We got a good finisher of our faith. He didn't only start this thing. He finished it. Finish means complete and entire. Having no need to add or subtract anything from it. We've got a good author. And author means one who has birthed and constructed an outline. He has put his stamp of approval on it. We can run and not be in you sure. 
strange. They think you're crazy. They think you've lost your mind. They think you're sucker. Goody two shoes. Old fashioned. Trying to take you backwards. The devil is a lie. The only back you can go is back to the Bible. Shout hallelujah. Let's run. Look at somebody and say, I'm ready. will not deny his name. Sisters and brothers, it's Jesus. From Genesis to Revelations, it's Jesus. 
if we're going to do anything, it's done into Jesus and by Jesus. If it's salvation, we have to walk through the door that says, I am the way and the truth and the life. If we are baptized, we are baptized into Jesus. There's no need in getting offended of it. He said, I am the Savior. I'm the Savior of the world. How many of you can still love him? How many of you are not offended about it? You tell somebody, it's just Jesus, honey. I don't care what you say and nobody else say. It's Jesus. It's just Jesus. Our power as a church is in the head of the church. And Christ is the head. That's where our power, that's where our foundation, that's where everything is. So now possibly, if you're not living in a life of power, you should be. Now, I'm going to ask those of you that are the believers here in Montgomery. Because I know that you've not been taught to walk on the word. So I'm gonna ask the ushers to just guard the doors. And those of you that are walking, you, you really know better. You know better, you know better. And it's a shame, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. And it's not all of you. Because you're, you're here, loving Jesus. But you always have that mixed multitude that come in here. Pretending to be Christian. Because Christians love God's word. Because love is word. Now they know that the gospel is being preached and they know that the altar call is coming, but they gotta just, I gotta just leave. I, 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 I gotta look at them, just look at them. It's damnable, it's evil. Now let me warn you. And I don't ever have to come back. I'm, I'm not that kind of preacher that I just got to. <laughs> I thank God for that. I do it out of obedience only. So I don't ever have to come back. But sisters and brothers, the body of Jesus Christ, we all prophesy. But then there are others of us that walk in the office of the prophet. And I walk in that office. And it becomes very dangerous. When you abuse it to the prophetic gift. It's very dangerous. Not me. I'm not dangerous. Everybody in here can be me. But it's the office and the authority of that office that becomes very grave and very dangerous. And oftentimes, myth, misinformation causes you to mishandle or abuse what you don't understand. <laughs> so because you may not understand the office, oftentimes misinformation making someone say, well, that's just, that's just a woman or that's just a man. Ain't nothing to them, honey. That's, that's very dangerous. Let me help you because we in the year release. Let me help you. Misinformation can cause you to abuse what you don't understand. You may have never in your life been taught about the office or the administration of the church and the different offices 
the apostolic office, the office of the apostle, or the office of the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, or the teacher. You may have never been taught church governmental structure, but let me share something with you. Study the word for yourself. <laughs> Study it for yourself, sis. We are walking into a phenomenal age and time. And by no means, never mishandle the gifts that are among you. Whether that be your pastoral gifts or evangelistic gifts, the apostolic gift, or the uh, prophetic gift or the evangelistic gift. Don't, don't mishandle what you don't understand. They walk in that office. They walk in that office. They have been given that office by God. And you have to respect God. Whether you like what they say or not, respect God. I share that with you because in the prophetic, oftentimes the spirit of the Lord will change in a room. And it's dangerous to just make up, I'm going to do what I want to do. Because you'll end up cursing yourself. And you never know. The she-bears may come out and just destroy you. Please, whether you understand it or not, you do better leaving it alone than trying to mess with it. You, you really do. You do better. God has a great move in this dimension that's going to take place in Montgomery. And that's why I shared with you on last night, God is doing a great separation of true and false gifts. Sisters and brothers, what's getting ready to happen in this city, in this state, in this country is going to be phenomenal. Please, in this great rejoice revival, Please, make sure that you don't revert back to old habits and old godless ways and old godless relationships. Because the pace of the church now is not walking. It's running. Please, please now. Now, if you couldn't hang with us when we were walking, It's going to be very hard for you to keep up with us and the church is not walking, it is running. The prophetic pace of the church now is running, it's running, it's running, it's running. It's running. So what it does, is it causes a great gap between those that, mm, I don't understand, so they keep that walking pace while everybody else is running. And it sets a gap. And when there's a gap, communication. It becomes a communication gap. There becomes a spiritual gap. You see? We're all in the same house, but we see it different. We at different pace, different levels of perception. I admonish you, Montgomery believers. Please, don't allow people to divide you from family. Don't, don't allow them to do it. Don't allow them to divide you one from the other. Don't, don't do that. This Bible will speak clearly of who our family is. It'll tell you who's family and who's not. And you will know them not by their works, but by their fruits. Please, don't be divided. We must bring in this massive harvest and it's getting ready to break through. Massive. Everybody. We're going to need everybody. Don't be somewhere where people won't allow you to work for the Lord. Don't be stuck up in a corner. You know why? Because you're still going to be held responsible for this harvest, for not getting it in. You're going to be held responsible. I'm going to be held responsible. So don't go somewhere and all you do is sit. Sit and pay dues and sit and bring on. No, no, get busy. You win souls, witness, 
Bring souls to Jesus Christ every day. Be busy because he's going to hold it and require it at your hand. Shall we stand? Reach out and take your sisters and brothers by the hand and let's pray. The Lord is very soon to come and that's why the church is in a full run. We got to hurry up and get this done. Ladies, pray. You know the Lord is calling you to preach the gospel, preach the gospel. Brother, and you know the Lord is calling you to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Study the word. Make sure you know what you're talking about. Don't be the cause of the church being mocked because you are a pulpiteer and you are ignorant. Yeah.